Hi, Professor Gerald Friedman here today to talk about coasts and property rights and internalizing externalities. Whew, that's a mouthful. Let's suppose you have a house full of students and you like to party. You like to play loud music. Your neighbors, oh, they don't like it because they are boring. This is them. Boring and ugly. Yeah, so they like to stomp on your party. Now, what can they do? They look upon your party as an externality, something that you do that involves you but affects them. So they go to town meeting, filled with people who are just like them, boring, little heads, small brains, big mouths, and they get a law passed against parties. They go to the police. I mean, the Amherst Town Police is like, they don't give a damn. They just, they want to, you know, do other things. They don't want to go beating up on parties. They want to eat donuts. But instead, they have to go bust your party. Now, they have an alternative, something else that they could do. Instead of bothering the police, instead of going to the government, they could go to you, and they could pay you not to party. And if you don't like your party very much, if your party's boring, then you'll say, sure, give me ten bucks and I'll stop partying. If the party's really great, you'll insist on a lot of money. And they will be able to pay you not to party, pay you enough that you won't party, only if they really, really, really hate the party. Otherwise, they won't be able to put together enough money that you'll stop partying. If it's a boring party, then sure. Even if they don't care very much, they could come up with a few. Now, if you have a right, if they have a right to quiet, then you would have to pay them to put up with your party. Again, if the party's boring, you won't be able to come up with enough money. But if you've got a really good speaker system, if you're going to have a really fun time, then you would be willing to put up a whole lot of money so that they would tolerate the party even if they really hate it. So, it's government. We don't need government. Coase's solution can lead to an efficient outcome. A bad party won't happen. Either they'll pay you a little bit and you won't party, or you won't be willing to pay them enough that they'll tolerate the party. Good parties will happen because they won't be able to pay you enough not to party and you will be able to raise enough money to pay them off so that they'll tolerate your party. So we have solution without an efficient solution without government, except, of course, that government specifies property rights, who, whether you have a right to party or they have a right to quiet. That specification of property rights determines the distribution of income. Who gets the money for the party? But it doesn't affect whether the party happens. That depends on whether the party is a good or bad idea. This is a nice theoretical construct, but it doesn't actually work. First of all, there's the problem of collective action and free riders. You might pay to stop the party or pay to run the party, but other people will run around dancing all night and getting drunk and enjoying the benefits. They'll even puke on your lawn, taking advantage of the fact that you arrange for the party. You'll see this happening, and you won't arrange for the party, so the party won't happen. Alternatively, the neighbors we'll all wait for somebody else to stop the party. Second, bargaining. I'll pretend that I don't like the party, just so you'll have to pay me off. 
you'll pretend that you're going to run a party, and you'll pretend it's going to be a really loud party, just so your neighbors will have to pay you off. There's all sort of all sorts of nefarious bargaining that goes on in a coast situation. So that is coast. It's had a huge impact on on uh, the American legal system. A huge impact on the economic system. Ronald Coase won the Nobel Prize for economics. He deserved it. That said, his so-called Coase theorem doesn't really work. Thank you. Have a good day.